Good afternoon, Pastor Matthew Hollywood, United Methodist Church. Uh, joining you as we continue our journey through the Gospel of Luke in the month of December, reading one chapter a day all the way up to Christmas. Um, we'll have a, we still have to double dip one day uh, in the next couple days, but do not worry about that. I'll worry about that. Uh, you just keep coming back here, either Facebook, on YouTube, um, hearing the good word. Um, Yesterday, we got Jesus entering Jerusalem, um, where we know the cross waits. Um, feels very Christmassy, doesn't it? And yet, Fleming Rutledge, one of my favorite, uh, certainly one of my favorite living theologians, if not favorite all time, um, one of the first female uh, Episcopalian priests, she says, the manger is always in the shadow of the cross. Um, because when we know... You know, so often with our children when they're born, we don't know what's coming. When we hear about the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem um, on Christmas Eve, we know where the story is going. Um, and so this is a wonderful reminder uh, for us in that way. So let us turn uh, to Luke chapter 20, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube. Let me know in the comments uh, what's really jumping out. I've really enjoyed some of y'all's comments um, throughout this season um, and the ways that we're both kind of interacting because this is entirely off the everything you hear from me is off the cuff because uh, i'm just opened up to the spirit we've been doing very spirit-led things that's how we started here is all about the spirit of course the conception of jesus by the spirit um the leading of jesus it's it's there's a lot of led by the spirit um so let's keep thinking about that as we go into it one day as jesus was teaching the people in the temple and proclaiming the good news the chief priests and the scribes came with the elders and said to him Tell us, by what authority are you doing these things? Who is it who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I will ask you a question and you tell me. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it a human origin? They discussed it from one another saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us. For they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. Then Jesus said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. He began to tell the pe people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and leased it to tenants and went away for a long time. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants in order that they might give him his share of the produce of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Next, he sent another slave. That one also they beat and insulted and sent away empty-handed and he sent still a third this one also they wounded and threw out then the owner of the vineyard said what shall I do I will send my beloved son perhaps they will respect him but when the tenants saw him they discussed it among themselves and said this is the heir let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours so they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him what then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Heaven forbid! But he looked at them and said, What then does this text mean? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the scribes and chief priests realized that he had told this parable against them, they wanted to lay hands on him at that very hour. They feared the people. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be honest in order to trap him by what he said and then to hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. So they asked him, Teacher, we know that what you say, we know that you are right in what you say and teach, and you show deference to no one but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful for us to pay tribute to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their craftiness and said to them, Show me a denarius, whose head and whose title does it bear? They said, Caesar's. He said to them, Then give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and give to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to trap him by what he said. And being amazed by his answer, they became silent. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the, marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman 
and died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and so in the same way all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to him, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore, because they are like angels and are children of God, because being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks to the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God not of the dead, but of the living. For to him all things are alive. All of them are alive. Then some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you have spoken well. For they no longer dared to ask him another question. Then he said to them, How can they say that the Messiah is David's son? For David himself in the book of Psalms, David says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemy a footstool for your feet. David thus calls him Lord, so how can he be his son? In the hearing of all the people, he said to the disciples, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, who love respectful greetings in the marketplace, and the best seats in the synagogues, and places of honors at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. This is the word of God for us and for many, the people of God. Thanks be to God. A lot, a lot of stuff going on here. Um, we've got a few more parables here, other questions. Um, you know, I think one of the overarching things going on here is that the ways the powers and principalities of the fallen age try... Um, to undo or prevent the kingdom of God um, from coming through. Like all along the way, they are just asking questions. Why? They need to turn somebody against Jesus. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, and really it's it's not about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Let's understand this. If we walk away thinking it's about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and then we start getting into some of this anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish thinking, we've entirely lost the plot. Um, it's about the powers and the principalities that are constantly trying to undo what God is doing or prevent God from doing it. Um, and so time and time again, we see this question. The parable he tells about uh, the wicked tenants, as the, as the heading says, um, you know, still is this way that giving to God what is God's is something we don't want to do. We want to have, kind of have a say of who who it belongs to. What that's why these questions about like whose authority, who owns this, who has responsibility, who has this power, it's all kind of up there. I mean, even this question about you know whose head is this, whose image, whose title is there. Um, all of those sort of questions at the end of the day have to be that all things including ourselves and our very lives belong to God um, but we and I would say even more so today with our whole idea of rights and personal property and you know personal all that sort of it just doesn't really work within the context of the gospel the gospel is all about the communal all about the community it's always a reminder just reminded uh, today as we, you know, when the angels go all the way back, you know, say unto you a child is born. It's not unto you one person. It's unto y'all as I preach my first Christmas Eve sermon here. It's unto y'all. And it's, it's all about y'all. Um, and so we need to kind of understand that, um, that God, God has all things under God's feet. God brought it all into bringing into existence out of nothing. It all belongs to God. And by God's graciousness, we now have any of these other things like authority, like titles, like all of that is simply grace. And when we miss that, when we try to take as private what is God's, is when we're really going to run the risk of standing opposed to the kingdom. 
So that's just something that I'm, I'm kind of thinking about here. Um, and the reminder, though, that it's not a constant thing about, you know, oh, all these people are awful and God is finger wagging up there. No, it's God sees us in our ways and God sees you don't even understand what you're doing. We hear Jesus say that, right? They don't know, they don't know what they're doing. Um, but Jesus in coming down, um, which was always the plan, helps us understand and be reminded who we are, whose we are, and how insignificant it would all be, how nothing it would be without the grace of God. That's what I'm thinking about. Um, there's a lot here. Let me know in the comments here. Um, and come back uh, probably tomorrow. We might do one this evening to double up today, but probably tomorrow uh, as we continue on the journey. And just as a reminder, in case you're wondering, on Sunday here at Hollywood at 10 a.m., we, we do have a Sunday school um, for those who want to come for that. Um, at 10 o'clock, we have our fourth Sunday of Advent service where we will light the fourth candle um, and have a very, very uh, special day. Um, some of you might know, definitely come out for that. And then at four o'clock, we will do our family service, which is the ABCs of Christmas. And I wrote on Facebook the other day, I am so excited about this. I've got some of the things kind of right here um, that will be a part of it. Um, you see how this one plays in. Four o'clock, that service is not streamed. That is only here in the sanctuary. 7 o'clock, uh, a typical Christmas Eve service. And at 11 o'clock, a Christmas Eve vigil. It's going to be the best kind of exhausting possible. So I hope to see you all there. But until then, uh, you can come back uh, to see us continue on through the gospel according to Luke. Have a wonderful day, y'all. See you soon.